In this exercise, we'll look at the effect produced when the camera is panned, and we'll also look at some zoom lens effects. Panning, as you probably know, is to take a picture at a slow shutter speed as you track the subject with the camera. It produces a fairly sharp subject and a blurred background. Pan pictures look best when the subject almost fills the frame, and so you'll need to include a tight crop. In this stationary shot, I'd like to introduce a panned camera effect. First, in order to figure out the angle at which to place the motion streaks, if you will, I like to use the measure tool. First, hold down the shift key and drag a line at the base point. Then hold down the option of the Alt key to access the built-in protractor and drag out a line along the angle of the car. In the info window which opens automatically, it'll register the angle next to the letter A, 158 in this case. Now we'll apply the motion blur filter and enter the value. Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. And adjust the amount. To bring back some detail, you'll use the History Brush. For the history brush, I'll use the lighten mode and paint at a lower opacity. This is important to paint in some of the critical image detail. Use long strokes and roughly at the same angle so it looks reasonably seamless. And here we have a panned camera effect. Next we look at a zoom lens effect, something you can produce fairly easily inside of Photoshop. When you change the focal length of its zoom lens smoothly and rapidly during a longer exposure, you can produce these unusual effects on film. It can make an image seem to explode with light and color. To begin, I'll duplicate the background so we have a copy to work with. I've saved away a selection of the lion, which I load now. Before I float this to its own layer, I'd like to make this slightly bigger as a selection. This is because when I apply the zoom effect to the background or the layer below, I want the edges of the lion to stay relatively unaffected. So select, modify, expand. Then feather the selection by roughly the same value. Now float the selection to a new layer. And this is what will be left unaffected by the zoom effect. Now target the layer below and choose Filter, Blur, 
radial blur. This time, choose the zoom option and the draft or the good quality. I like to use these when I want to introduce a little grain to the effect. They're also faster than the best option. Next, set the amount and the blur center. And that's produced the zoom effect. As a finessing step, you can also darken the background. I'll apply a multiply curves adjustment to do this. Check the option group with previous layer so the layer above is not affected. And now you can lower the opacity if you like. for a very nice zoom lens effect.